Welcome back, Phil. Thanks a lot. It's great to be here. Good to see you again, back in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking like we've never moved. It is almost, yes. <laughs> so um, in the last video, we talked a lot about um, that whole exploration of mindset and knowledge and the almost like trigger points, the things that, that got us to think differently. And you mentioned uh, very kindly that kind of letter landed on your desk and kind of changed your life. So talk us through the thought process then. So you got this letter and you went, oh, that's interesting. What was the thought process that went through your mind and you know, tell the viewers what you then started to explore and, and, and how our relationship developed really? Yeah. It was actually a bit different to that. It wasn't a case of this is interesting. It was a case of <laughs> bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, because uh, I mean, by that time, I'd got a lot of built up frustration. Mm -hmm. uh, and I knew there were things I wanted to do. I knew I didn't know how to do them. Yeah. I'd done a lot of the mindset work. So it was like everything was ready to go. So there's this kind of big head of steam built up and this just, it was just, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally, that was, was what went through my head was, where do I sign? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was, that was pretty much even before we spoke. So yeah, yeah. you would have had to do a lot to put me off <laughs> at that point. <laughs> that's good to know. Um, Not that you so, made it easy for me, but that's, well, that's fine. No, that's well, where would the good. fun, where would the yeah, fun exactly. have been? But, yeah. um, so, I just wanted to. I just wanted to know more, and I think I picked up the phone and yeah. called you yeah. pretty much straight away to have an initial conversation around. Look, yeah. this is really interesting. So how, yeah. you know, where do we go from here? How do we develop this? I knew I wanted to do it, mm. um, and the price point was an interesting thing because it was quite high it was quite a significant investment. Mm -hmm. And actually, at the, at the time where I was saying, yes, I want to do this, I wasn't actually sure how I was going to pay for it. Yeah. Because I, yeah. I, I didn't have the money sat in the bank. So mm -hmm. I was saying yes to doing something without actually knowing <laughs> how I was going to pay for it. But it was a bit, it, it was weird, because it was a bit like when we started the business, yeah. and I said to you, I had the confidence, I knew it was going to work. Yeah. At that point in time, it was the same thing. I just knew, I knew I would find a way because I knew it was, it was just yeah. right. It was yeah. the right thing and it was the right time. So I just knew that I would find a way to do it. Yeah, yeah. but you've really kind of embraced it, gone for it yeah. and, and, and reaped the reward. So I just want to talk about that in a bit more detail then. So one thing you get told at the outset that makes you roll your eyes a bit because it's like, yeah, you would say this, wouldn't you? Um, is the thing about it's a numbers game, building mm -hmm. a funnel, all that stuff. Yeah. Because um, until you've actually done it, you, you don't really understand the truth of that. Mm. Um, but it is, it is a numbers game. Yeah. Um, you need to talk to a lot of people. You need to, you need to develop a lot of leads, if you like if you want to get anything out of the other end of the funnel. Yep. And that's simply because there are so many reasons along the way why things can just drop out. Yep. Even the ones that look fantastic yep. can just overnight just disappear. Yep. Um, and so you have to, well, firstly, you've got to put the time into it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I started out spending a full day a week just developing leads. Yep fairly quickly that wasn't enough mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so it became two then three <laughs> and so on yeah. um but also i was lucky in that as i got into it i enjoyed it yeah yeah i enjoyed the experience of looking at lots of different businesses in mm -hmm. lots of different fields and yeah. you'll you'll recall that one or two of them were a bit out there <laughs> um, we definitely had a few conversations along the lines of phil why are you looking at this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the, yeah. the exotic. Um, <laughs> to yank you back again. Yeah, yeah which was, it was good. But yeah. I, I yeah. really enjoyed the process of looking at them. I, look, I enjoyed the process of looking at the mm -hmm. accounts and the numbers. And then even more so when I actually got on the phone and started talking to the business owners. Yeah. Yeah. What a great bunch of people that mm. they, they've been. I mean, all right, some of them have been misguided. Some of them have had 
odd ideas about the values of their businesses yeah. and whatever. But yeah, yeah. Um, I need a million quid. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> For, um, my, for my two hundred and fifty thousand pound turnover yeah. company, yeah, uh, absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. What are you going to offer me for my business? Yeah. Well, this business is worth one point two five million. Well, I want ten. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. All of that. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Um, but I, I've I've just found it a really interesting experience. Mm. So that's helped. That's helped keep me going. Mm. And I mean, I was lucky in that um, one came out of the end of the funnel. Mm -hmm. um, in your experience, having gone through the process, would you agree on my assessment that 80 to 90% is emotional and 10 to 20% is, is technical? What, what's your yeah. feeling around that? Yeah. It's, well, even the numbers bit is emotional because people make decisions through emotion, not through reason. So mm -hmm. even when people are looking at numbers, you'll, to an extent, you'll see what you want to see. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending on how you feel about it. Yeah. So, um, it's been, it's one thing that I seem to be pretty good at. And it's, I mean, it's a genuine thing, is being able to build rapport with people, particularly when I speak to them over the phone early yeah. stages. It's making people feel comfortable quite quickly with me and the, the genuineness of the approach and the genuineness of my interest in them and what they're doing. Yeah. Um, that's really, really important. So it, yes, it's all about people. Businesses are built on people. Yes, they've got machines. Yes, they've got systems. But yeah. ultimately, it's all about people. Something that a lot of people miss is they think they've got to negotiate the best deal they can get, whichever side of the fence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this is particularly the case where the vendor has an advisor because the advisor feels their duty is to negotiate the best possible deal they can get. Mm -hmm. What they forget, and I know you're really aware of this, is, is that after the deal's done, we've all got to live together. Yep. So what you're dealing with here is not a normal commercial negotiation. Yeah. The nearest analogy that I can find to it is it's a prenup. It's a good way of putting it. Yeah. And if you fall out in negotiating yeah. the prenup, yeah. the marriage is not going to be much fun. No. no. Or it's not going to happen. No. Because it's, it's not we're going to do a deal and then we're each going to walk away. Mm. Because almost invariably, after the deal is done... You're still this, bound together. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, are yeah. still tied together in, in so many ways. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you need a platform, you need a foundation for that yeah. ongoing relationship. I, I think that's a really, really good analogy. How did you feel doing the deal? And how did you feel the morning after when you went in there and went, oh, this is what I've really got? Um, the completion itself was a little bit strange because we were in the midst of the lockdown. Yes. Yeah. So we had so to do celebrate. We had to do socially distanced completion, <laughs> um, which meant we weren't even. I wasn't even able to shake hands with, yes. the, with the husband and wife who just sold me their business. Yeah. Um, I'd taken along a couple of bottles of bubbly. Yeah. To yeah. so I gave them a, a bottle, and we've got a photograph of of, of me and them sort of standing yeah. two meters apart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with our bottles of champagne. Yeah. Um, but it felt, at that moment, it was partly, there was a, a sense of relief yeah. Yeah. that it had happened. I think that was probably the, the predominant thing. It was kind of relief. Yes, yes I've done it. Yes. Yeah. And then, uh, at the time, you don't think about what you've done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's happened, it's come off. Yeah. We're there. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, phone the wife and tell her. Um, the day after, actually, the day after, the, I felt really good. We, t we finished, we completed on a Friday, so I went into the business on a Monday. Mm -hmm. um, and the seller hadn't told the workforce mm -hmm. that he was selling the business. Yeah. It's really common, really common. <laughs> so he called yeah. this meeting, I think it was 11 o'clock on the Monday morning. Yeah. And Here's your new boss. He stood there and I'm stood there. <laughs> and the guys all come in and it's like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Who's this then? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'd been dressed up when I'd been going in there to look at the business beforehand. I'd been dressed up as being someone from the bank. Mm -hmm. So they're thinking, why the bank here? Yeah. 
<laughs> um, so he, oh, he, good, a banker's oh, bought no, us. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. <laughs> so he, he, he made the announcement. And um, I mean, I, for me, sort of standing there in the midst of it, it was great. Um, it just felt really good, actually. I didn't have that, oh, crikey, what have I done yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, at least not at that stage. Um, I think that came a bit later. Yeah. But no, in fairness, it didn't. Um, yeah. It just felt really good. Yeah. Because it just feels so real. I mean, part of the thing is that the business I've bought is an engineering business. Mm -hmm. It makes things. I've yeah. never worked in a business that makes things. I've no. always been in services. Services, yeah. yeah. Um, so it, it, it's actually fascinating. There were, in, in this case, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a small business. There were 11 people working in the business. Mm. The owner and, well, to be fair, the co-owners, husband and wife, each performed particular roles inside the business. Mm. It was easy to understand what she did because she ran the office and the yeah. admin. Yeah. So you immediately think, okay, I need someone to do that. Yeah. Um, with Steve, Steve's an engineer time served engineer and so obviously he ran the engineering side of it but it was only actually when I got in there that I really started to understand what that yeah what that was yeah um, I knew that I needed someone to replace Steve I didn't know exactly what that what that person looked like as it turned out he introduced me to the person who's now the general manager. I did a recruitment exercise. We didn't actually find anyone that mm. felt quite right. Mm. Mm. And Steve came up with a name um, of someone who'd actually apprenticed in that yeah. business, yeah. then moved away and done other stuff. Yeah. Um, but Steve thought he had all the elements. Mm. Mm. And, uh, and my attitude was, well, let's talk to the guy and find out. Yeah. Um, and um, I'd spoken to him on the phone I also got a, a friend of mine to help me interview him and we, we did a, a Zoom interview with Chris and um, I turned to my friend afterwards and said, what do you think? And he went, he's your guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we, we did that. So in a way, that's the obvious replacements for the owner and, 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 and his, what are the, the co-owners. But I think what's just really interesting about that um, and this is something again that, that we've talked about in, in the group and uh, uh, in other coaching. And that's that thing of when you look at acquiring companies, it's not necessarily about what do I know about engineering by your own admission, nothing yeah. really, uh, other than you know what an engineering product looks like. But what you brought to it was the skill set and the knowledge and the expertise that you have. So you had a background in, in recruitment, mm -hmm. so you could tap into that. You also had an understanding of you know of business in around really, and that's yeah. something that I try to encourage people to understand, and for business owners to see the benefit that you, as a fresh pair of eyes, and particular skill sets separate to what that business does. Um, you know, we own scaffolding businesses. I've never lifted a scaffolding pole in my life, but I understand the business model. I understand the processes to, to take that business and grow it and scale it, which is what we've done. So, and it's the same thing that we'd encourage yeah. is, is that conversation around how can we do things differently and better in that business. Yeah. I did and nearly miss something. Yeah, I did nearly miss something actually, because in the run up to buying the business, I knew we needed to do marketing because it was the classic. Yeah. They, yeah. Didn't, do, they didn't do marketing. So I'd got that budgeted for yeah. and in place. It was only after the deal when I first got in there, and I think Chris, the, the general manager, started a week after the deal was completed. I realised that we'd got a hole where sales needed to be. Mm -hmm. um, we got marketing covered, but not not sales. Yeah. Um, so then I had a, de a decision to make, and the the result of that was hiring. A, Yes. a business development manager, yeah. which I hadn't budgeted for. The yeah. costs of that weren't in the model. Mm. So that caused me a bit of trepidation, but I just thought that could be the difference between working mm -hmm. and not working. Yeah. So whether you budgeted for it or not, sometimes yeah. you've just got to do it. Yeah. 
Um, and that is the thing that will make the difference, actually, yeah. is that, that yeah. sales capability. Yeah. yeah. And that's that marketing, sales, ops, finance piece. Yeah. Is that rinse and repeat model that really, in truth, mm. every business yeah. should have? Yeah, because so. one bit's no use without the yeah. other. So now you're, what, eight weeks, nine weeks in? Yeah, eight weeks. Give or take. Eight so, weeks last Friday. Yeah. Uh, and now you're already reducing your time commitment in there and you've got new, fresh deal flow going yeah. on. So you've managed to sustain that in the background and now you've got fresh opportunities. Yes. How do you feel, do you feel that things have changed? You now, you're, you're a tried and tested deal maker. You've done a deal, yeah? Does it change your perspective? Do you think it changes how people perceive you? What, what's your take on that? It definitely changes how people perceive you all around the space because you're not a one entrepreneur. Yeah. You've, you've done a deal, all right, it's one deal, but yeah. you've done a deal. So you've shown you can go yeah. through the process and come out the other end. Yeah. So the jury's still out on me because there's a heck of a long way to go. But yeah. Yes, I've done a deal. Yeah. And people look at you differently because of that. Um, but also, you feel different. Mm -hmm. And I've had one or two people say to me, there's something different about you. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not your lockdown haircut. It's not the lockdown haircut. No, it is. <laughs> and it is, it can only be that. Yeah. It's the fact that I, I've actually been through the process, yeah. come out the other end, and now I'm going, okay, next. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, undaunted. Yeah, yeah. Why absolutely. Is more experience, I, but yeah. undaunted. Yeah. And, and yeah. doing the first deal has changed me because I'm now thinking differently about the businesses yeah. that I'm looking at, both yeah. in terms of the type of business, the sector, yeah. but also in terms of saying no to things that I would have allowed to slip through the net before, yeah. because I don't actually need, yeah. I'd like to do another deal before the end of the year, but if I don't, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't need a deal. I would like a deal, yeah. and that's the difference. Yeah. It was almost getting to a point, and you've seen this with other people, where they need to do a deal, yeah, and that's absolutely. where you've got to be careful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. They try to squeeze an unproductive opportunity into the pot just to kind of go, oh, I've done a deal. Uh, and and I, you know it, because I've, I've done it with you. It's like, whoa, Tiger, you know, that's not the solution. That's yeah. not what you yeah. need to do. So, um, and even with, with the business that you acquired, right close to the end, it was like, ooh, should we still do this? Because you uncovered some stuff in due diligence that changed quite dramatically and we're able to go, well, okay, let's separate the emotion of what we found from reality and the, the fundamentals are still there and we can still impact on it and we still do good things with it. And that's pretty much how it's come about. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And also we were able to restructure the deal as well to make it work. So Yeah. Very, very cost effective for you. So and protected the business and still achieved the uh, the goal for the seller really. Yeah. So and that's what a great win win's all about. It's good for you, it's good for him and it's good for the business.